ladies and gentlemen, our last finalists this evening. Please welcome Slap Five and Jeff Ernst. Who here trusts what friends or colleagues say when they're making a major purchase? Anybody? Yeah, just about everybody. So uh, when, when I was an analyst at Forrester, I confirmed that in every study I did. And the other thing that I confirmed in, is that companies are spending 40% of their marketing budgets on content. And the problem is, is that 98% of that content is in the company's voice. But a thousand buyer interviews have told me that what buyers really want is to information in the customer's voice. They want to hear what the customers have to say. And it's really hard to do because companies struggle to, to, to capture and manage and use their customer voice. And that's where Slap 5 comes in. We're the first customer voice engine that makes it drop dead simple for companies to capture their voice of their customer, audio, video, and text format, and then inject that into every sales and marketing initiative to knock down their challenges to grow. Here's an example of how Carbon Black is using it to earn trust and urgency with CISOs. Obviously more is getting through. Here's another example of how DataWatch is using Slap 5 to validate their value proposition around their uh, Excel. In the underwriting process, when we receive our document. So we're blown away on the Slap 5 team about the market traction we've made. I mean, we've got amazing customers in under two years, Microsoft, Cisco, Carbon Black. And we've also got a huge pipeline, uh, largely in the tech industry where I've spent my industry. But it's just unbelievable. We've also built a distribution channel of agencies and research firms that are providing managed services around Spotify and already bringing us into their customers. Uh, we have, since day one, we've offered our service for free for nonprofits because this is a great way to showcase the impact that they're making. And last year, we were a finalist for the Innovative Tech of the Year Award from Mass Technology Leadership Council. Uh, one thing we're doing that very few startups do is we've created a financial justification for our system and aligned it with the top priorities of the C-suite. Uh, we've got a killer team. I've been a four-time CMO, a Forrester analyst. My partner Tim, who's in the room right over here, Tim, uh, he's been a sales leader in many companies, entrepreneur, and Tim and I co-founded a previous company called Talent Reef together. Also a killer advisory board that's bringing us in and making a lot of introductions for us. Where we see the future is taking our brand curated model to a peer-to-peer -peer network. And we believe that the, the blockchain is the ideal place to do that. And we were actually part of the blockchain startup weekend where we confirmed this and validated with blockchain experts this concept of bringing the slot 5 to the blockchain. Uh, here's our timeline, largely around aggressive customer acquisition. <laughs> Uh, once we win the beta challenge, uh, and then uh, around seed funding and uh, you know, ra rapid enhancements of our system. Finally, what we'll do with the prize money is we're going to accelerate development. We're, uh, we, you'll see, I got the stop message, but that's what we're going to do with the money. <laughs> Jeff wants to start. Thanks, Michael. I can start. Jeff, uh, that, that looks really interesting. I just, if I can get a little clarity, though, I see you had some recent customer wins and uh, nice tiles up there. It, is, it, is it a SaaS platform and you don't do any of the, you just enable your customers to grab the content and create what it looks like, or are you actually helping to curate and develop the output? So, yes, great, great question. So we're, it is a SaaS platform. Uh, annual subscription, working with these customers. Uh, because this is such a new way of doing things, what we're doing here, our customers require a lot of help and hand-holding. So there is a good amount of that that goes on, especially with the early customers, as you know, as Diane knows from your, your experience. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why we're building the, um, the agency partner, because they can provide the managed services. Because a lot of the hand-holding is more strategic than it is on the, uh, the actual execution level. You're seeing that this rolling out would be a little bit of uh, hand-holding implementation of it. Yes. And then just recurring revenues uh, going forward. Recurring revenue. Using the platform. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Jeff, a uh, great idea. Thank um, you. What I'm curious about is, you know, it's a, so let's just say Carbon Black, because it's a big company. Yep. Um, I would think that they have a pretty decent-sized marketing team and that they put a ton of money 
into their website. They do. So why do they need kind of like the easy, cheap version of putting the voice of the customer, embedding it there? Like, why would why aren't they doing it already? I mean, is it literally that they're not going to spend a little bit more money? And then related to that, with companies that don't spend a lot of money on their website, like couldn't Squarespace just build something like this? They could, but the so the first question, you know, why isn't Carbon Black doing it already? It, it's because they, uh, they, they, it's a real struggle to get customers to contribute their stories, and especially to contribute it in a way that aligns with the biggest questions, fears, and doubts that your buyers have. And so our whole methodology behind Slot 5 is the more surgical approach to make sure that you're addressing those issues that, that are keeping you know, the, the, the biggest obstacles to your customer acquisition and detention. And so most marketers don't even know how to do that. And so, um, so the, what we're doing, and it's not just, don't just think of this as going into the website. Think of this as this is um, sales tools that sales reps are using to replace those burdensome customer reference programs where they deal with customer burnout. So there can be, you know, those examples you saw here, that could be used by sales. It could be competition crushers when a sales rep is up against another competitor. This customer voice can also be used to gather customer insights to be used internally to improve your customer experience. And that's what Carbon Black is doing. And they're not just using it on their website, they're using it for, to drive their partner strategy, their product strategy, their customer experience strategy, as well as their sales and marketing. Couple of quick questions. First, what's your sales cycle timeline? What from you know, the first meeting to close? Yep. How do you close that gap? And then also, as you look to the future, uh, it seems like you're staking an awful lot of blockchain, which is effectively still the Wild West. Why is that? And why do you yep. think that, that that's the way to go? OK, so the first question, do you want the average, the high, or the low? Oh. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> um, I'd say our longest sales cycle was like probably 18 months, but uh, the shortest has been three weeks. And I think what ha what's happening now is there's being more recognition out there about the power of the customer voice. And there's more recognition that traditional marketing tactics aren't working anymore because buyers are putting up uh, you know, blockades to the company's messages, and that the customer voice is really the only thing that can break through. So there's more recognition of that. And so now, Tim and I, you know, will tell you that we're, we're going into deals right now where we've got a champion that sees this, wants this, and can drive it through in a matter of like three or four weeks. So I would still say it's probably an average of three months, given the fact that you get procurement and legal contracts and all that to go through. And then the second question about blockchain, we're not banking on blockchain. What we're banking on is more of the peer-to-peer -peer network we don't need to do that on blockchain, but, the, but right now we're in investigation mode. And that's why right here, um, you know, what we really want to do is to use the money to deliver the customer requested features because we just haven't been able to keep up with the customer acquisition that we got. We didn't expect to be acquiring customers this rapidly. And, um, and then it, you know, expand more to a peer-to-peer -peer network. Whether that's on blockchain or not, we still don't know. Jeff, a really nice uh, presentation. My question is, is big emphasis on search engine optimization these days. Yep. And the examples I looked at, you know, that you gave us prior to coming in here today, there's no text associated with any of the audio files. Yep. Uh, how do you how do you address that with customers who are concerned you know value SEO? Yes. Yeah, so, so great. And again, just think about what you put on the website is just one of hundreds of uses of this, but SEO is very important there. And so what we do is we actually transcribe the audios and videos, and you might not have seen it in the examples I shared with you, but um, there, there's the ability to have the text version of a customer <coughs> story right there as well. And so this performs incredibly well on search engine optimization, not only technically, but also from a business and keyword term perspective, because all the language that you're getting in these stories is deep pain and, and solution and, and emotion of what these customers are feeling and, and sharing, which is exactly what buyers are now searching on when they're trying to solve a problem. Okay, Jeff, time's up. All right. Thank you.